Hello, my name's Duncan Knox, and I'm sorry, County Council's Road Safety and Sustainable School Travel Team Manager. Uh, I have pleasure in presenting to you today our Rural Speed Limit Project. So I'm going to explain a little bit of background and rationale behind the project. Uh, explain a little bit about our speed limit policy, which we've applied to the roads in question and what method we use to review the existing speed limits uh, on our rural country roads. Um, I'll provide a few case study examples of locations and what speed limits they've been changed to and highlight the need for evaluation and what, what the next steps for us are going to be. So uh, most of the audience listening to this, I expect, won't need convincing that higher vehicle speeds are a bad thing. We know that that increases the risks of collisions and increase the severity of the consequences. And fast, busy traffic can deter more walking, wheeling, cycling and horse riding, and it can result in more noise and air pollution. And I think during lockdown, we had a huge increase in noise complaints, actually, where people were working from home a lot more and uh, people were going faster on some of the empty roads. So that that, that was quite a big uh, change, I think. Um, it's also worth remembering that safer speeds is one of the main uh, five pillars of the safe systems approach to road safety, uh, which we're uh, starting to follow now in Surrey. One of the, the reasons we, we embarked on this project is that regularly uh, we were challenged that rural speed limits appear illogical to our local county councillors and uh, local residents. Um, the speed limit on some of these narrow country lanes is, is the national speed limit is 60 miles an hour and that obviously would be impossible or, or best reckless on some of those roads um, and a lot of our main roads alongside these narrow country lanes have already had their speed limits reduced because of uh, history of collisions so a lot of those are kind of 40 miles an hour but then you turn off those main roads and you go onto a, nas a national speed limit 60 mile an hour narrow country lane it doesn't really make any sense and uh, in order to manage speeds I think it's worth remembering that with increasing vehicle, uh, improving vehicle technology, more and more vehicles have intelligent speed assistance. Um, so the vehicles will tell you what the speed limit is that you're driving and maybe give you a reminder if you're exceeding that speed limit. So setting sensible speed limits seems even more important now. Having looked at maps of speed limits across uh, um, our, our county, it was noticed that over time there have been reductions in speed limit on the southeast of Surrey. There were no national speed limit roads left at the bottom right hand corner of Surrey, but elsewhere in Surrey that hadn't happened. And that's just uh, a, a curiosity from the local members in that area seem to have invested more in that uh, kind of thing, whereas not so much elsewhere. And it's not unusual to get requests for lower speed limits on individual roads from local communities or elected members. But when you're looking at one individual road at a time, when you're comparing it to other road safety schemes or, or the cost and benefits of other uh, highway improvement schemes, then it doesn't rate very highly because you're only considering a very small stretch. It's more expensive in the long run to do to change the speed limits incrementally like that and you get an inconsistency across the road network. So what we're looking to do here as part of this project is look at changing uh, rural speed limits on, on a proactive strategic area wide basis and we were lucky to get some money from our, our road safety partnership which will be supplementing from our own budgets to, to do this. So just to, to elaborate on what I was saying before, if you look at the bottom right hand side of, uh, sorry, the southeastern corner, this is a map of those speed limits. Um, so you can see there that the dark green represents 60 miles an hour and there's nothing hardly there uh, left at that bottom right hand corner. It's mostly 40 miles an hour and over the few 50s in between the, the, the islands of 30 miles an hour and a few 20s. And, and that's what was interesting to me. Whereas if you go to the southwest of Surrey on this next slide, you can see there's far more uh, dark green colours across here indicating a national speed limit of 60 miles an hour. So um, 
I would say that, you know, with this project, a small reduction in the speed um, isn't going to make a great lot of difference at any one location. But when you get lots of small differences, at lots of locations across a whole wide area, I would argue that that would add up to a big difference overall. And when you think about a single signalized uh, crossing costing about 150,000, 200,000 pounds typically, when you're spending that same kind of money on lots of roads covering a whole wide massive area to change the speed limits in kind of one go, I think then it becomes a lot more comparable. One of the kind of challenges that you might have to, to changing speed limits in rural areas is the fact that you will need additional signing and repeater signs and terminal signs, and that can be problematical, especially in an area of outstanding natural beauty. You know, I'm sympathetic to that as, you know, and understand those concerns. So what we've done here is uh, use wooden posts where appropriate from a local supplier, local sawmill, and we're trying to be as sparing as we can with the signs and where possible co-locating any speed limit signs with with existing signposts um, to ad to minimize that additional street clutter and urbanization. And it's worth remembering that the latest speed limit signing requirements are slightly less prescriptive. Um, you, you're required to provide adequate guidance to the driver. Um, but there isn't a, an absolute uh, requirement for the spacings that, that is there. It's all in guidance now rather than an absolute requirement. So just to elaborate on our speed limit policy. So we have a threshold set um, above which uh, additional supporting measures are required to get the speeds down. So if we want to reduce a speed limit to 50 miles an hour, the existing mean average speeds must be 57 or less, and at 40 it's 46, and at 30 it's 35, and, and so on. And those um, involved in uh, speed limit enforcement will probably recognize those numbers as the magic 10% plus two uh, threshold. And so what we've done is, is measure the speeds across our network, and based on what those existing mean average speeds are, we can then see what new speed limit will be viable. And this means that what we're doing is setting the new speed limits to a level that most people are driving quite close to already. And as a result, it's not going to create an, an enforcement burden on the police uh, because most people will be sticking to or close to these uh, new lower limits anyway. So the method that we used is to define a study area, first of all, and choose convenient boundaries, such as main roads or the boundary of the county with another, um, and, and, and choose lots of locations for pneumatic tube surveys uh, across all the road network that you're interested in. And you need to consider where to uh, put those surveys in if the street furniture are available to attach it to, and to try and divide the network intersections that are similar. So if you have a long section of road, you might say, well, we don't need lots of surveys along the whole load of it, but we can just say, well, we know this bit is probably the fastest bit of that stretch. So let's try and put it on the fastest bit. And we know if the speed limit will be viable on that fastest bit, then it's certainly going to be viable on some of the other stretches, which might be slightly narrow or, or, or twistier. So then we look at the speed survey data and then consider what speed limit would be viable uh, in accordance with our policy. And you have to use a fair bit of common sense in these circumstances to determine the start and end points of the new speed limits. So uh, typically junctions or natural thresholds, a new building line or, or where the road suddenly becomes more twisty or, or narrower, uh, so that the look and the feel of the road kind of makes sense to the driver. Self-explaining roads is a phrase I could use for that. And then once you've got your, your, your outline plan, it's always worth consulting with important stakeholders, parish councils, uh, and to take on their views um, and on the proposals and refine them slightly in light of their comments. So 
the next step is to obtain approvals from decision makers to proceed. Um, in, in, in our area in Surrey, we have local committees of elected members and who decide on highway matters. So we have to present that to them for their permission to go ahead and advertise the speed limit changes. Um, and then we commissioned detailed design and they, they went through the formal legal process of ad advertising the legal speed limit orders and receiving comments on those. So an example of how, uh, how how many speed surveys you need is just this little edit of the map and how many locations where we, we commissioned speed surveys. So the area we, we chose is, uh, I think you can just about make it out using, uh, is encompassed by the pink highlighter pen on this map here, um, bounded by the A24 to the east and uh, between Shear and Cranley to the west and the county boundary at the south and the A25 at the top. Uh, this means that there will be fewer kind of changes in terminal signs needed at the very edges of the area in question because there's not that many entry and exit points. And this is what the new speed limits uh, are proposed to be. So you can see there from that key, there's actually quite a lot of 20 mile an hour speed limits uh, proposed uh, as part of this project. And when that was the outcome, I was a little bit, oh gosh, what have we done here? Uh, I'm a bit, a bit perturbed by that. I wasn't expecting it. I thought it'd be a lot more 40s. But actually, when you look at these roads, um, they are single track roads with passing places. And it absolutely makes sense for those roads to be 20 miles per hour because most people are traveling close to that anyway. And if you've got people walking, cycling or riding horses on those roads, you don't want people careering down them at 30 or 40 miles per hour. So I'm just going to flick back to the uh, existing speed limits and you can see how all those national speed limits, a lot of them are becoming 20s, a lot of them are becoming 30 and there's a few, a few there at, at 40 as well. So um, this, here are some examples and th these give you hyperlinks to Google Street View so you can have a look them for yourselves when the uh, presentation I'm sure will be circulated after the conference. But I'll give you some examples here. So this is uh, the centre of uh, Cold Harbour which had a national speed limit of 60 miles an hour which obviously doesn't make any sense when you look at the, the nature of the road and the use of it by the, the people there cycling and walking. And this gives an example of the kind of signing that we've used in that we've used the wooden posts and tried to be a little bit uh, sensitive to the aesthetics of the rural nature of the these areas. And this is an example uh, of a narrow country lane which is also going to be reduced to 20. Now this is Pease Lake um, and this is an interesting one. It currently had a 30 mile an hour uh, limit, but that's being changed to 20. And that's because a, a few of the approach roads to the village were very narrow country lanes with single track with passing places and we were reducing those to 20. So it didn't make sense to keep the centre of the village as 30. We've changed that to being 20 as well. So this is an example of a road which is being reduced to 30. You can see it's slightly wider. Um, there's room for two cars to two vehicles to pass each other um, and, and a 30 mile an hour makes sense. It doesn't have, interestingly, it doesn't have any centre line already on that one. And again, this is another example of a, a 30 mile an hour where there's room for two vehicles to pass. Whereas this is a more uh, a, a faster road the existing speeds were closer to 40 and so this has been reduced to a 40 mile an hour limit and you can see that this does have a center line and and you know it's a slightly wider road and a, a longer straighter road as well and then this is a, an example of a 50 mile an hour road uh, that we're proposing uh, rather than the 60. Now this is one where the existing speeds were very close to 50 and I, we did um and ah about this one. I'd prefer it to be 40, but in accordance with our policy, a 50 is, is what's uh, allowed. Therefore, that's what we're going with for now. But I think I'd like to come back to this one because I think 40 is what we would be desirable under the safe systems um, ethos. 
So will it work? Um, well, I think, as you know, we need more debt time for before after comparisons of collisions and casualties. That'll take a few years, but we will be doing some before after comparisons of speeds. Um, we'll be doing that in a few months now. We've just just in uh, um, implementing the speed limit changes. Um, and I think there will be a, a small reduction in the mean speeds, but I'm hoping particularly there'll be a, a larger reduction in the 85th percentile speeds. And I think if they come down more significantly, um, that will be a great result um, because those are the ones that are probably much more likely to be involved in uh, collisions and a greater risk. Um, but we're very uh, lucky to have Agilisys working with us as well, who and they're going to be completing a, a second phase of public attitude surveys. Um, they've done some before, uh, uh, before investigations, and we're going to see what people think about it afterwards as well. And that's funded um, from a grant from the Road Safety Trust, which we're very grateful for too. So in in a few months' time, we'll have a, a kind of a comprehensive understanding of, of the impact of the changes on, on people's attitudes and opinions. So the next steps for us uh, it will be to continue, continue implementing these new lower speed limits over the coming weeks for the agility to complete the phase two evaluation. And then I expect we'll be continuing to roll out lower rural speed limits across the rest of the south of Surrey in future years and, and probably across the rest, the whole of Surrey um, to the north of Surrey, though there isn't quite as much to do across there. Um, and, a, and a shout out goes to my colleagues, Matt Smith and Chris Agent, who have spent a lot of time working on this on top of their usual workload. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening. And I look forward to uh, fielding some questions. Thank you.